Hey, hey, how you doing? My name is Ryan, and today I'm taking an honest, hard look at knockoff Lego minifigures. Now, knockoff minifigures usually cost around a dollar a piece on eBay, and can be most commonly found under the company XINH, at least sold individually. Lepin is a whole different beast in itself. But with such a low price point, the question is, what do you lose when you go from an official Lego minifigure to a one dollar knockoff? Is there any difference at all? Is it even worth one dollar? How close are they to actual LEGO minifigures? Well, we got a whole box of knockoffs from the Marvel series to find out. The box itself is from Barnes & Noble. They let me keep it after spending an hour on the floor looking for minifigures. But, we got about a good handful of figures to check out. So knockoffs fall into one or two categories for me. They're either recreations of pre-existing figures, or they're attempts to make new figures in the same art style as LEGO. We had a, a, a handful of both in this pile of bags. So we're gonna see, one, how well they compare to real figures, and if they're new, do they fit in with other figures? Let's start first with Ooh, this one. So this figure looks to be M'Baku from Black Panther. Let's open her up. One of the hard things about knockoff figures is that they'll come half pre-assembled, the head, body, and legs attached but the arms and hands not. So you actually have to pop the arm into their socket, which is harder than it should be. Immediately off the bat, the pieces don't fit as well together as real Legos. Although that's more a knock on the pieces themselves than the actual minifigures. Is there, is there, is there a name for what you call knockoff figures? Like, is there like mini fungers? I'm gonna call them mini fungers now. So I finished my Mbaku mini thunger. Chest and leg printing, it seems a bit too clean. The, the black outlines are really uh, a bit bolder than they should be. The arm printing looks a bit unfinished actually. It, it looks like, uh, almost like clip art. The face, the art style is right, but the proportions are way off. The chin is way too high up on the face. It makes it look a little bit fat. So this is a new figure, this does not have any real counterpart, and I would say it probably would not stack up against real figures and fit in. But maybe I'll have luck with the next one. Let's go with, let's go with a pre-existing figure. There we go. This is Wong, and this is the knockoff version of the Lego Bricktober promotion version of Wong. So this one's good. I've got to save myself like 80 bucks. This one actually comes with uh, two little mandala pieces, which is kind of cool. It also comes with a skirt piece. It looks a lot more proportional than Umbaku did. It looks more correct. This one isn't that bad at all. Uh, the printing looks nice because there already is a pre-existing design to it. The line work is nice. The detail work is solid. The colors are nice and bright. Um, for comparison, I have the original Wong from Bricktober. And you can see they're pretty dang close. The face print is only noticeably bigger on the knockoff when compared to the original. I wouldn't say they're identical. There are some differences in the patterns on the belt. And the red lines on the knockoff's face are much more uh, pronounced than the original. But the coloring is darn close. If you didn't have the original figure to compare this to, this is a darn good knockoff. This is well worth the $1. For a point of comparison, I also picked up a Wong Mini Fonger that was released before Bricktober came out. And this one suffers from what I'm gonna call fat face syndrome, where the print of the face is too far up on the headpiece and it makes him look fat. This one also has the thin afro hairpiece, which is a nice choice, but again, with this face print, it just looks silly. This is Dr. Eric Selvig from the Avengers. He does appear in minifigure form in the Marvel video games, but never before as an actual figure. So I guess this is a midway point between original design and recreation. This one also comes with a shield briefcase. Oh, that is, that's actually quite nice. It's a cool prop. Because he wears plaid, the line work actually makes some sense. Ooh, but the front, and back do not match at all with consistency of, of how thick the lines are. The face comes off as a little cartoony and not really accurate to his face. 
I mean, it's okay. It's, it's an okay print. Honestly, the best part is the briefcase. And even that's a little bit... The more I look at it, it's like the lines are drawn on by a fourth grader. I would call this passable. It's passable to figure. I, if I was making a stop-motion short film, I would definitely use this over making my own design because it looks closer than whatever I can make. But again, if they were to make an actual set, this would not pass for the design. Who shall we make next? Here we go. This is a new design. This is Vision in human form from Infinity War. This one, the legs didn't even come pre-built. It came with the hit piece and legs I have to press on, which is a little bit obnoxious. This one looks simple in terms of design, and I'm liking it a lot already. It looks proportional. The extra markings on his skin, the colors don't match between the face and the body. But other than that, this is a pretty solid figure. I like the quasi-glow effect on his forehead, although the glow around the Mind Stone actually is off-center. It's these kind of little mistakes that really stick out on knockoff figures. But because the design is so simple, this could easily pass for a real figure. Alright, next we'll do a recreation figure. This is Bucky from Infinity War, and this again is a version of the Bricktober minifigure. Alright, the chest print is nice. Uh, leg printing is pretty cool looking. Uh, the Wakanda arm looks a little bit off-centered and a little bit sloppy, but the dead giveaway is the face. It doesn't look that great, and I think because it's the plastic that they use. I presume XINH uses a cheaper form of plastic to keep their cost low, and it has a certain shine to it that LEGO figures don't have. But one thing I will say is that this minifigure comes with a more proper gun, as opposed to the space pistol that the actual Bricktober figure had. It's a nice job. And for point of comparison, here are the two together, side by side. When you put the two side by side, you really see the difference in skin tone. Many figures have a much more flesh skin tone to them, while many fongers have a yellowish hue to the face, and that's where the shine comes into play. And again, I also have a mini fonger that was released before October came out, and this one's design is actually really impressive, except for the face. The face looks like, well, actually Jesus, to be honest. I'm really impressed by this design. It's quite intricate for a mini finger. If I take the face and head off this guy and, and put a real Bucky head on it, it'd be a pretty solid minifigure. All right, who's next? Let's go with, Oh, this is a cool figure. This is Stan Lee, rest in peace. This is Stan Lee in his space outfit from his cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 when he was talking to the watchers. The leg and body connection for the mini founders is super loose. Probably again because of how they machine the plastic. All right. From a first glance, this is a really cool mini founder. Printing is nice, the design work is retro and cool looking, but the glaring error on this guy is the mustache is actually off center from his face. This could, this could almost pass for a minifigure except for that mustache. It really is a dead giveaway. I should mention, this entire collection of mini founders cost about, I'd say, $16. And so far, it might have been worth it. Alright, who do we have here? Here we have Black Panther, but this is his civilian outfit. This is his purple robes, I think, from Infinity War. Okay, this one is not bad at all. I love the design between the body and legs. The hair piece is nice. The proportion seems correct, but maybe that's because I'm not actually holding a real minifigure next to it side by side. Overall, this could very easily pass for a real figure. We'll keep the Black Panther theme going right now. This is T'Challa in his waterfall ceremony combat costume. Okay, we got a shield. We have this massive sword. What the heck? And a spear, which I can't have all of them. I can't have him hold all of them. This might be the best mini finger so far. I really, really like this a lot. The proportions seem great. The print work is nice. The line work is clean. The props are cool. Yeah, this could pass for a mini figure, and it makes me want the set so badly. That's you know that's the sign of a good mini finger if it makes you want to buy a set based on the figure itself. 
Next, we'll do one more Black Panther for right now. This is his uncle. I forget his name, so I'm just going to call him Forrest Whitaker for right now. Ooh, we have our first robe piece. Well, this is the older robe piece where it's just a flat slope. The new ones have a, a curve to it. Design work is nice. Line work's a bit too pronounced. Nothing on the back. And the face seems a little bit off to me. Maybe it's the proportions. This is not as good as the waterfall mini founder of Black Panther. Then again, nothing might be. So it's a high bar. Well, how about this one? This is Kraglin from Gardens of the Galaxy. And I've always wanted a figure of him because I think he just fits right in. It looks like they gave him Yandu's face, but in peach. I might need to grab the figure to confirm that, but it looks eerily similar to Yandu's smile. The, the black line work on the print is okay. I'd probably just use an extra Ravenger outfit that I have from an actual minifigure for this. Um, Finn just barely fits on that head. This is good. Not great. Good. All right, we got a few more left. Just a tiny handful. Let's go with this one. This one is Rose, aka War Machine, but he's not in his suit. So that's a, a new design. This is a mini founder trying to have two-tone arm printing, where it looks like it has short sleeves on. It's brown and blue, but they used a brown arm and painted a blue sleeve on the shoulder. But once you lift the arm up, you can see the brown around the print. So it looks really tacky. How about this one? Pepper Pots. Infinity War jogging outfit. The freckles are nice, but the, the lines around the lips make her look really old. And is that a necklace or is that supposed to be like a line here? I think most of these figures range just from the okay to good god range, with very few of them reaching the precipice of good. All right, how about Tony Stark to match? And this one actually appears to be a version of Tony made before the Bricktober series came out. So it's a similar design, but not trying to mimic it. So we'll see how it compares. Uh, the face, good God. One, why does Tony have red eyes? Two, what the hell is wrong with his face? This might be the second worst face I've seen. Serious case of fathead. For laughs, let's just compare it to the October minifigure, and yeah, that's just... Mm. Peter Parker, in civilian clothing, with a Spider-Man hood, as if he's, he's about to pull the face mask over his face. You know, I don't mind the look of the face mask. I wish the hood Spider-Man eyes matched the minifigure Spider-Man eyes. So if I was making a stop-motion film, and I had him pull the hood down, it would look consistent. This is, this is borderline good. We have what is supposed to be Baron Zemo from Civil War, but he looks nothing like Baron Zemo from Civil War. I'm not even gonna build this one, this one just looks terrible. I was gonna say the only good thing was the red book with the star on it, but the star is off center. So this is Okoye. Black Panther in her full ceremonial garb. A new, like, either chest piece or back piece. I don't know what that is. What is that? Uh, the eyebrows are really big. The eyes are huge. The arm print looks nice. I don't know what that back piece is for. And it would make mounting this mini finger a real pain. But, yeah, this is... This is, this is okay. Alright. Next is James Buchanan Barnes, before he became the Winter Soldier, this is back in the 1940s. Um, not a fan of the face print, I like the body print, they're trying to make a version of the video game minifigure, and it's a little bit below okay, so that's something, I guess. Uh, we have one more. One more. I already had this one built because I loved it. This is a new figure, it is Red Skull in Infinity War. They use the Dementor legs, and while the face is scrunched up, I love this mini founder. Probably one of my favorites, for just one I've always wanted, a uh, Ghost Red Skull. Two, it looks darn good. So about $15 later, I think there's only one mini founder I'd actually consider mounting, 
and that's the Waterfall Black Panther. Ah, I love this so much. But, there actually already are some knockoff mini figures on my Marvel board right now. The difference is, they don't cost one dollar, they're really well made. A few that I can think of right now are Kaecilius, Iron Man Mark I, uh, Deathlock, Armin Zola, and what I discovered with some of these figures is that even if they look really pretty, the holes in the back of their legs that I use to mount them often don't fit into LEGO studs. So I have to take a knife and carve out a little bit of their legs. But if they're really well made, and I mean using actual LEGO pieces and a custom printer, then they'll fit perfectly on, like Kaecilius does. So are mini fongers worth it? I think they're really hit and miss. Oftentimes the design they show on eBay is a little bit different from what you actually get in person. But if you're willing to risk one dollar, sure, you might get a win like this one. If you're willing to spend a bit more, like 10, 15, 30 dollars, there are some really great custom minifigure sites out there. Phoenix Customs, Minifig Me, Firestar Toys has some great ones too. Obviously, an official LEGO minifigure is the best. They spend the most amount of money and the most amount of time making these look great and feel great. But if you either can't wait for the new set to come out, can't afford it, or this doesn't exist, a minifunger might be the way to go. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.